Hey guys, my name is Amanda and I'm here today with my friend Noah. Hi everybody. And we are talking about the Bible stories that we have learned so far during VBS. Uh, we have learned about God being the Good Shepherd. We have learned about Jesus calming the storm. And we've learned about the faith of the centurion. So today we are going to be talking about my favorite story, the gospel story. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. So I've heard of the word gospel, but I don't exactly know what it means. So gospel just means good news. Okay, but there's like lots of good news. There's like ice cream and there's friends and there's ice cream and there's amusement parks and there's puns and there's ice cream. Like there's lots of good news. This is true. This is true. Um, but what we're talking about today, our type of good news, Think of it like a royal announcement, like a king or a princess having news to share with its kingdom, that good news is happening in their kingdom. Wait, so then that makes Jesus a king. Exactly. But when I see baby Jesus at Christmas time, he's always in hay surrounded by donkeys. He isn't in a royal palace, so who's in this palace? Well, there were a lot of bad kings and bad rulers in the time of Jesus, but that is exactly why Jesus came. He came to be the perfect king, the perfect example, the perfect ruler. The bad rulers were hurting people, but Jesus was healing people. People were mean to each other, but Jesus brought peace. Well, that's great news. Wait, wait, so, so how did he do it? How, how did he bring the peace? Well, Jesus showed this crazy radical forgiveness. He told people that you respond to evil by loving your enemies, forgiving them, and seeking peace. He healed people and forgave them of their sins. Wow, how nice of Jesus. Okay, okay, so let me guess how this ends. The bad rulers step down, Jesus becomes king, and everybody loves him, right? Not exactly. The bad people wanted to stay in charge. They wanted to live how they wanted to live not how God wanted them to live. Okay, that's too bad. But what's the worst that can happen? It's not like anything bad happens to Jesus. Well... What? What? Jesus was killed. What? It's true. He was tortured and nailed to a cross. But he didn't do anything wrong. You're right. He never sinned. Couldn't he have escaped or something? Why did he die? He could have escaped, but he chose not to. He chose to die for the sins and mistakes of others. He died for our bad and selfish decisions. That's good news? That's pretty sad. Well, wait for it, because the story's not over. But he died. Right, but three days later, everything changed. Jesus came back to life. What? But he died. He came back to life? He did. Wow. That was an emotional journey. Who wrote that story? What do you mean? I mean, who made up that fairy tale? No, Noah. That is a true story. That actually happened a couple thousand years ago. Jesus was God living as a man. He lived a perfect life, died for everything we have ever done, then came back to life to show he was the true king of the world, whose love is stronger than death. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's awesome. But what does the gospel story mean for me? Well, Nick is outside, and he's going to show us how the gospel isn't just a good story, but it can actually transform our lives. All right, we're ready to get started. Hey, Noah, thanks for being here, buddy. Welcome. Good to see you. Amanda, thanks for being here. Thank you. That'll come in handy in just a little bit. All right, so who is ready to get started? Because, okay, okay, I'm excited too. All right, because we're going to answer the question, what does having Jesus mean for me? I mean, Jesus is good, right? But like, what does it mean? Maybe you believe the Bible story and that Jesus rose from the dead, but like, now what? Does it change me? Does it change you? We're going to talk about that for a few minutes, okay? 
But first, I need your help. I need you to tell me what this is. Anybody? Yeah, what do you think it is? All right, she said an ice cooler, and she's not wrong. But inside the ice cooler, I have some stuff, and I need your help telling me what it is. What is this? It, it's a paint can, that's right. What does it normally hold? Paint. You guys are smart. You done this before? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so what is this? Ooh, it's a bottle, a soda bottle, right? And it normally holds? Soda. Soda, that's right. You guys are an incredibly bright group. Okay, what about this? What is this? Almond milk. Yeah, an almond milk container, right? Now, it is. this is unsweetened, not that that mattered, but it holds almond milk. And then lastly, I have this right here. What is this? A trash bag, right? You, you guys all take out the trash. You know what a trash bag is, right? Some of you don't take out the trash. That's okay. Because this trash bag is designed to hold trash. Now, question. Would I ever go to a grocery store and pick this up and it be full of this and be like, here's my almond milk and walk out of the grocery store like this? No, right? You wouldn't do that. Or you wouldn't pick this up and expect paint to be in it, right? The, these all have something in common. What do they have in common? They're all what? Containers. containers, right? Containers are made to contain things, to protect things, to keep them the way they are. Does that make sense? Now we're gonna learn a few things, okay? If these are all containers, we have to understand that we too are containers. What do you contain? Like on the inside, give me some examples. Yes, you have a heart. Guts. You have guts and brains and boogers and all sorts of crazy stuff inside of you, right? All right, ooey gooey things, Ugh, okay? And But you're full of stuff. Your skin contains all of it. Does that make sense? But we learn from scripture that we also contain something else. The Bible tells us that our bodies are temples. Look at your neighbor and say, my body's a temple. That's right. I'm going to tell my wife later. My body's a temple. Our bodies are temple. And you know what else the Bible tells us? It says that your body doesn't belong to you, that you are not your own. Look at your neighbor and say, you are not your own. Yeah, the Bible says you were bought at a price. Someone, something paid for you and it owns you, but we'll get to that a little bit later, okay? But the Bible that says because you don't belong to you and because you're a temple, you're supposed to treat your temple the right way. And guess where we learn how to treat our bodies, our temples, our lives from the Bible. From the Bible, that's right. You guys have the great Sunday School Answers. I'm super impressed, okay? Now, because you don't belong to you, it's important that you realize you're supposed to treat yourself according to someone else's plan. Like for example, these are the keys to my house, my car, to everything uh, that I own basically, okay? If I were to give these to you, can you catch these for me? All right, now this young lady, I let her borrow my car. I don't know why I let her borrow my car, but I let her borrow my car, okay? Now hopefully, because she's my friend, she's gonna drive my car safely. She's gonna drive the speed limit. She's not going to run into people or things with my car. But what would happen if I got my car back and it was scratched and it was dented and the inside had like food all over the inside of it and it was all scratched up and torn up? Would I be happy about that? No, I would be like, why did you hurt my car? It was on loan to you. You're supposed to treat it right. And she would go, my bad. Okay, give me my keys back. I can't believe that. All right, but she's a good kid. She's, she would treat my car right. But what we have to remember is that our bodies are not our own. They belong to God. And he wants you to treat your life, your body, your heart, your soul, everything about you a certain way. And we find out how to do that, how to treat our lives in the Bible. Now, the, in like Psalm 19, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it tells us lots of different things about God's word, about scripture. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. Perfect. That's a big word. It also says it gives us new life, that the Bible shines with its commands. These are big, bright, fun words. It says that the words in here are worth more than gold. What if this thing was just a big hunk of gold? Do you know how much this thing would be worth? Like, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what it says is that the words in here are worth more than gold. And it says that the words in here are sweeter than honey, that when we hear God's voice, we're like, mmm, that's tasty, right? Everyone say, mmm, tasty. Mm. 
people that's right, okay? Now, we know that God has a design for us and he wants us to read this thing. But the end of Psalm 19, it says a couple of cool things. It ends by saying, Lord, you are my mighty rock and my protector. And we learn a couple interesting things uh, from just this one passage. One, we learn that God's word can be trusted, but sometimes it's hard. Have you ever had trust issues with somebody? And you're like, I don't know if I believe you. Well, I got a couple daughters, and when they were very young, we had a trust exercise. Maybe you've had a parent go away on a vacation or, or on a work trip, and then they come back and they got a prize for you. Well, I did that for my daughters once, and it was really cool because where I was at, I got candy that looks exactly like rocks. I mean, straight up, it looked like concrete rocks. And I said, hey, girls, I want you to eat this candy. And they're like, it's rocks. And I said, please, or I didn't use the word candy though. I just said, eat these. And they're like, but it's rocks. I said, eat it. And they said, it's rocks. And I said, trust me, eat it. And then they start like, Ooh, like they want to listen to their daddy because they love their daddy. They trust their daddy usually, but I could see why they had trust issues. I was asking them to do a hard thing. And then I looked at them and I said, does your daddy love you? And they said, yes. And then I said, does your daddy only want what's best for you? And they said, yes. Would your daddy ever harm you or do anything mean to you? No, eat the rocks. And then, and then one of them, I won't say which one, but one of them goes, oh, I can't. She's, she's smiling, but she's got tears. And the other one, I, I whisper, I said, it's candy, just eat it. And she pops it in her mouth, she eats it. She looks at the other one and goes, it's candy. And then the other one, and they both eat candy and they're like, daddy's so great, right? But here's the thing, the Bible's gonna ask you to do things that might sound hard, but it's not, it's, it's worth it, I mean, it, it's good. It's, it's what God wants for you, he loves you. And he's going to help you because here's the other cool part of that passage that I said, it said, Lord, you are my mighty rock and my protector. But that's weird, you're a temple and God sits on the inside of you. We call it the Holy Spirit. And we think I'm protecting the Holy Spirit. I'm keeping him safe. No one hurt the Holy Spirit, but it's actually flipped. The Holy Spirit sits on the inside of you to protect you. And that's where this is different. You see, what I brought here is another container. What is this? Mm. It's a balloon. And it's full of what? Some water, right? And so here's the thing is normally, how long would it take for a balloon to pop if I put a flame to it? <laughs> it wouldn't take long. Let's find out. Front row, you might get a little bit splash, and that's okay, right? But right, let's see if we can get a flame going. Can you see that flame? Yeah, let's get a bigger flame. Oh, let's leave that up. <laughs> Fix it in post. Here we go. All right. Is that a real flame? Is it really touching the balloon? If that was your hand, would it hurt right now? Would it catch on fire? Is the balloon popping? No. Why? Because the water on the inside. Can you all see the markings, right? The, it is burning, okay? It's getting scarred and life might be hard sometimes, but God will protect you. But here's the thing, he'll only protect you. He can only protect you in the areas where you let him. You see the water is protecting the bottom of the balloon. The Holy Spirit is protecting that part. But sometimes in our hearts we're like, but I'll give God my Sundays, but not my Mondays or Tuesdays. <laughs> And sometimes we'll give God certain things and say, well, God, I will let you uh, help me forgive my friends, but not my enemies. And so God says, listen, I know it's hard and it's going to be difficult, but trust me, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be inside of you to protect you. You don't protect me. I protect you. And we can be really encouraged by that because remember, you were bought at a price and you are a temple and you are worth something to God. And he paid for you with Jesus's blood. Remember that story? And so we can be excited about that. The verse that you have on your paper, you can see, reminds us this. First John 4, 4 says, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. We can be super excited that God owns us and he protects us and we get to live for him. It's really important to remember that it's not 
who we are, it's whose we are. Do you all remember that, that awesome Pixar movie, Toy Story? Okay, remember Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond? and his good buddy, Woody. Now they didn't start off friends at first, you remember? They get sort of like kidnapped and they're across, uh, like across the yard over at that mean Sid's house and Sid is gonna launch him in a rocket and super sad and scary, okay? And, and, and you have Buzz and he discovers for the first time that all he is is a toy and he's sad. He thought he was like a real, you know, uh, spaceman, but no, he's just a toy. And, and, and Woody's like, what do you mean you're just a toy? You're super cool toy. You got that choppy thing and the laser thing and your helmet does that whoosh thing, right? And Woody's trying to tell him, hey, you are a really cool toy. But Buzz is like, but I'm just a toy. And he was sad and depressed. And then Woody brings up the fact that on the bottom of Buzz's shoe, what word is written? Andy. Andy is the boy that owns Buzz. And to Andy, Buzz was super valuable. To God, we are super valuable. And so it's important for us not to look at who we are. Well, I'm just a kid, or I'm just a you know, third grader, or I'm just a whatever. No, I belong to God. It's not who you are, it's whose you are. And the good news is that we're told that if we give our lives over to God, it changes who we are. We are his sons and daughters, and that's super exciting. And here's all it takes for that to be true. Romans 10, 9 on your papers. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So what does it mean for you and me? Well, our sins are forgiven. We're protected by the Holy Spirit. We belong to God and now we get to live for him. And one day we will return to him in heaven. Isn't that good news? It changes a whole lot about our lives. And all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess. And so I'm going to pray right now for anyone that wants to pray and ask Jesus into their heart to come be their Lord and protector. Does that sound good? All right, I'll do that now. Father God, we thank you and praise you for coming in the form of Jesus, for living a perfect life, for dying for us, and then raising from the dead, proving that you are Lord of all. Lord, we confess with our mouths that you are Lord, and we believe in our hearts that you raised Jesus from the dead to forgive us. I want to belong to you, and I want your Holy Spirit to live in me, to protect me. Thank you for this gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Cool. Well, I hope everyone had a good time. Thanks for being here, and make sure you go tell someone else the good news. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Hey parents, we know that just like trying to teach your kids math or English or any of the other school subjects, that teaching your kids uh, about our faith can be tricky at times. Maybe they have difficult questions or maybe you just need some extra resourcing and support. If that's the case for you or your kid has accepted Christ and, and you wanna know what the next step is, please reach out to us. We would love to help you in any way that we can in helping you be the pastoring parent of your child. You can find out how to reach us on our website or the VBS portal you've been using on Facebook. There's lots of ways, and we would be excited to help you in whatever way that we can. Thank you for watching.